Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Adam Bergasser at UC San Diego, and I apologize for not being able to be there live, but hopefully uh, this is a um, uh, useful uh, uh, sort of summary of my experience uh, of the first year we've had with the UCSD Morehouse Physics Bridge Program, and hopefully it's something that will be uh, useful for those of you who are there and discussing uh, your own projects. Uh, the UCSD Morehouse Bridge Program is a, a program run by myself and Willie Rockward, who is the Chair of the Physics and Dual Degree Engineering Department at Morehouse College, uh, and this is a program that's funded by the UC HBCU Initiative Program, and there's a website right there on the first page. So just a quick overview of the program. Uh, this is an eight-week summer research and graduate preparation program, uh, and the whole goal of this program, and mostly because it's the goal of the UC HBCU program, is to increase the number of graduate applicants uh, from HBCUs um, and, in general, increase the number of African-American applicants uh, to UC graduate programs. Uh, as I said, this is supported by a three-year grant from the UC Office of the President's UC, UC HBCU initiative. And uh, one of the things that we're able to do is capitalize on the strengths of our individual programs at UCSD Morehouse uh, and a considerable amount of university infrastructure that's already in place uh, to allow this uh, program to happen. And one of the important uh, design goals of this program is that it's sustainable beyond the three-year grant program. And we're doing this through the development of faculty collaborations, not just in research, but also in some of our education initiatives. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So just a real brief background on the UC HBCU initiative. Uh, this program was started in 2011, uh, again with the primary goal of increasing African-American enrollment in the UCs at the graduate level. Um, one of the motivations for this is uh, simply the very, very, very low fraction of African-Americans represented in the UC academic doctoral programs, about 2.6% over the years of 2008 to 2012. Uh, so this program was initiated as a way of uh, addressing that issue. The program provides uh, two years of full support for any of the participants who are accepted to any of the UC graduate programs. Uh, that's two years of their graduate uh, research, and that comes directly from the UC Office of the President, so that's something that the departments uh, uh, value very highly. Uh, so far, over 150 students have participated in this program at nine campuses over the past three years, and we there are about uh, 20 of these programs now funded, uh, and three of those exist here at UCSD, including our own. Now, that is the, I would say, the glossy story of why uh, the UC HBCU program is in place. Uh, I would say one of the real stories is that uh, things are even worse uh, than those statistics indicate. Um, African Americans are highly underrepresented in the UC system, but they are particularly underrepresented in the uh, STEM programs in the UC system, and particularly in physics. Uh, many of you know uh, uh, our friend Gibor Basri. Many of you do not know that he is the only faculty member uh, in physics in the entire UC system. Uh, out of 279 physics uh, faculty, that makes a percentage of about 0.3%. So if you do the math, uh, faculty are, African American faculty are underrepresented by about a factor of 400 compared to the overall demographics of the California. So this is a, a real underrepresentation issue. Uh, far and beyond. And of course, many of you also who know Gibor know he's gonna about, he's about to retire pretty soon. Uh, and so that number is about, uh, about to be 0% for the UC system. Um, a more immediate trigger, however, is that uh, when I came to UCSD in uh, January 2010, uh, the following month there was um, a fairly terrible event called the Compton Cookout. Uh, this was um, something pro propagated by uh, some of the uh, the fraternities on campus, um, and it received national attention because it was uh, really highlighting the degree of marginal marginalization uh, that not just African Americans but other uh, minority groups experience uh, on UC campuses. Uh, and there have been several of these events that occurred during that period. So uh, I think this was probably one of the major triggers uh, for this program uh, to come into place. Uh, it certainly was an event that galvanized a lot of the efforts uh, that have been ongoing at UCSD since uh, 2010. So why Morehouse College? Because uh, Morehouse is way over on the other side of the country, uh, where you guys are right now. Um, one the, it's actually, I think, our programs are fairly well matched when we uh, look at the statistics for African American uh, physics bachelors and, and PhDs. Uh, Morehouse is the leading producer of African-American uh, physics bachelors, at least they were uh, last year. 
Um, and UCSD uh, turns out to be one of the leading producers of African American physics PhDs in the country. Uh, both these statistics come from the AIP Statistical Research Center. Now, many of you know that uh, that UCSD being a leading producer is not necessarily a uh, reflection of the incredible diversity of UCSD, but of course the very small numbers of African American physics PhDs uh, that are coming out today. Uh, but probably more important is that there is existing infrastructure between UCSD and Morehouse. Uh, for the past 13 uh, or 15 years, we've had an ex existing student exchange program between our universities, uh, for which uh, something like two or three students uh, exchange between our two, to our campuses uh, every year. And uh, so these programs have been in place for some time, but I think the driving factor is in March 2012, uh, Willie Rockward uh, brought uh, about 50, uh, sorry, 40 young men from Morehouse on a college, uh, rec uh, sort of college visiting tour through Southern California, and one of his first stops was here at UCSD. And that visit really galvanized a relationship, working relationship between himself and and I and myself, and. Um, that sort of led to the development of the proposal for this program. So we've designed a program that uh, synthesizes three major components uh, in, in the student experience, uh, research, graduate preparation, and sustained collaboration for the program overall. In the research realm, uh, the students participate in, as I said, eight weeks of faculty-led summer research. Uh, they also receive research skills training, so that includes uh, research presentations, research writing, and basic laboratory skills. And they also interact with a graduate advocate who really becomes a research advocate uh, during their time here on campus. The students participate in a large research symposium that we have every summer at UCSD, and there's also support in the, in the funding for uh, participation in a national conference, and we have two of these students uh, from this past uh, summer will be going to the SACNIS conference uh, that's coming up in October. The next aspect is the graduate preparation program, and this includes a GRE testing, uh, a GRE testing course, GRE testing skills. Uh, they receive workshops in writing graduate applications and writing an NSF graduate research fellowship uh, program application. They also consult with graduate admissions in various departments here at UCSD. And uh, as I mentioned, there's also funding support when they do uh, matriculate in a UC uh, graduate program that two of their years are, are covered by the UC Office of the President. And finally, in order to keep this uh, structure maintained, uh, having a sustained collaboration between UCSD and Morehouse is an important goal for our project. And so this includes uh, faculty and student exchanges, not just during the summer, but also during the academic year. Uh, we're also working toward a model of co-mentored research programs where the students work on research projects that are mentored both by UCSD and Morehouse faculty during the year. And we're also developing uh, some ideas for collaborative research and educational programs, uh, things that, uh, that uh, will go beyond this particular summer research program but are things that can be more sustainable and in particular may help uh, raise funds for future, uh, future projects. So this is our class, uh, our first class uh, that came uh, just this past summer. Uh, these five students were um, selected by uh, Willie Rockward um, based primarily on the research potential and I should say they also span a pretty broad range of years. Um, we wanted to make sure that we got several uh, younger students so that they have uh, more time to develop their research skills. But we also wanted to give students who are more senior an opportunity to uh, participate in the hope that they will apply soon for graduate graduate school. Um, the faculty mentors were actually solicited before this in the fall, um, and, and by the time that we had the student lists, uh, we actually had enough uh, both mentors and students to match them based on the student research interests. And during this time, the students were also matched to their graduate advocates uh, for that part of the research program. So all the things that I just described uh, results in a pretty busy calendar. So this is a typical calendar. I think this is July. Um, and you can see all the activities that the students are required to do in addition to the 40 hours of research time that they are expected to uh, conduct uh, during, the, during the summer program. Uh, so there are uh, the GRE classes you can see in the mornings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, Wednesdays uh, are the main workshops, and you can see some of the examples there, how to have an effective presentation, how to write a personal statement, et cetera. Um, that's also the time when they would meet with their graduate advocates. 
Uh, and then there's also uh, cultural and social outings that we would have uh, during the, typically during the weekends, but also during the week. And this was an opportunity for the students to uh, see what uh, you see what San Diego, Greater San Diego area is like. And uh, we also, the students also had weekly assignments that were tied to their workshop classes. And so you can see that uh, they had things like drafts of their NSF uh, graduate research fellowship program, personal statement due uh, during some weeks. Uh, graduate school admission uh, drafts do. All of this is aimed to get the students starting to uh, prepare their materials for graduate uh, applications. Now one of the critical resources that we have here at UCSD uh, is the Summer Training Academy for Research in the Sciences or STARS program. Uh, this program has been in place for several years now um, and it really organizes a number of the summer research programs uh, here on campus and they are really the ones that organize all of the graduate preparation activities. So all these activities that I talked about are really done uh, through the UC, uh, through the STARS program. Uh, and uh, the program was has been run by Veronica Henson Phillips for the last uh, eight years. Um, just before our program uh, started this summer, she actually stepped down. And so we were fortunate enough to have Lisa Maldonado and Jenny Wanniger uh, step in and uh, run a pretty fantastic program. Uh, and this was for 80 students this year. So just some snapshots of some of the activities that the students participated in. Uh, you can see the classroom uh, where they're learning about uh, research skills. Uh, on the right is Saidu uh, with the radio telescope that he uh, helped uh, construct uh, as part of the Keating Lab at UCSD. Uh, and then the lower left uh, was one of the opportunities for the students to interact with some of the graduate missions, in this case, uh, one of the chemistry graduate uh, faculty. Um, we also, as I mentioned, had students go out uh, and explore San Diego a little bit. So there's some pictures uh, of, uh, of folks <laughs> visiting uh, different parts of uh, San Diego. Um, they also participate in some outreach programs that we conducted during the summer. Um, and one of the students, Jared Butler, actually organized a service event uh, down at the San Diego Mission. And so we were very, uh, actually very proud that he organized that uh, as part of his uh, summer research experience and, and encouraged many other students to participate as well. And finally, here's some shots of our closing uh, uh, event, which is the Summer Research Symposium. Um, the picture on the bottom is the one I'm most proud of because this was the first time in the history of the Summer Undergraduate Research Symposium that we had a session entirely devoted to astrophysics. And part of that was due uh, to the number of students who, uh, from Morehouse who participated in astrophysics research this summer. So getting into the nitty gritty about how the program was conducted, um, we were definitely inspired by the Fisk Vanderbilt model, so one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did during the summer was, was track their progress uh, and look for what Kayvon describes as the second derivative of, uh, of, their, of their progress. Um, so we had interviews and surveys uh, conducted three times during the program, during weeks three, six, and after the summer. Uh, we also conducted surveys of the mentors during weeks three and six to see what their perceptions of the students' progress was. Uh, during this time, we maintained a, a dashboard to sort of keep track of what issues were taking place with the students and, and, and what actions were, were needed to uh, address those issues. Uh, and the students were also tracked by the STARS program and their own graduate advocates. Now, a few this was important because actually a few interventions were required during the summer, um, and I think those interventions were critical to be addressed immediately because the program is so short. Uh, and in fact, both those cases, they seem to end up with uh, success uh, because of those interventions. So just an example of how those interventions took place, um, one of the things we tracked uh, during week three and six was their degree of science understanding of the research project. Not surprisingly, when they first come in, their science understanding is pretty low. Um, and of course, naturally over time, as they work with their research assignments, their uh, science understanding develops. But we also helped them sort of uh, develop that understanding and develop their appreciation that they were, they were gaining their knowledge um, by having them explain what they were doing and explain to each other. And over the course of just those three weeks, their, uh, their, their perception of their understanding of their science jumped pretty dramatically um, in a pretty short time. Now, it's not just students that we intervened with. Uh, one of the things we noted early on in our surveys was that uh, several of the students did not have uh, a fairly clear research goals or research duties or requirements given to them. And so that was a case where we actually intervened with the mentors instead of the students. 
And as you can see by week six, most of the students had a pretty good idea of exactly what their uh, research uh, project was about. And then here's an example of some of the interim reports that we would produce uh, as part of these surveys uh, and then would be added to the dashboard. Um, in this case, we have two students, one who is a, in a warning stage of yellow and one who's in a, uh, uh, I guess, first is watch and the other one is, is a desperately warning. Um, in the first case, we had a student who started a little bit late and unfortunately this, the advisor wasn't around during the first two weeks of their, uh, their, uh, their program. And so, um, so, you know, we identify the issues and we also encourage the faculty member to spend a little more time discussing the big picture and have a little bit more uh, mentoring by the grad student while, while he was out of town. In the second case, uh, unfortunately, the project the student was supposed to do uh, fell apart at the last minute. And uh, instead of having a clear alternative project, the faculty mentor basically just gave them a lot of reading to do. Uh, and the student was very unhappy about that. So um, we directly intervened in that case. And the mentor came up with a plan. And, and that was a plan that the student followed for the rest of the summer. And it worked out to be very good. Now, these surveys also provide some input on how to improve over the, uh, the next summer. Uh, one of the things we, we, we encouraged the advisors to do in the, before the summer period was to contact the students and provide them with some preparation materials. And uh, we, we, just from talking to the students, we could tell that that wasn't actually done or wasn't done to a sufficient degree. And so that points to having a much more formal uh, way of having the students prepare uh, before they arrive in the summer. On the other hand, uh, we apparently provide them with too much <laughs> time to prepare for the summer research conference. Uh, uh, two out of the five uh, said that that was uh, too much time spent on that. Um, and so we can probably devote some of the time that we had spent for uh, conference preparation for uh, uh, finishing off the research assignments themselves. So what were the main issues that we saw during the summer? Well, um, not surprisingly, some one of the issues we had was, was, was sort of back faculty mentor management. Um, many of the faculty um, who are here at UCSD have uh, summer uh, conferences and summer travel programs. Um, we strongly encourage our faculty to make sure that if they were traveling to have a secondary mentor present, but that wasn't always followed. And so that was the main problem was making sure that the students had mentoring, continuous mentoring during those eight-week period. Um, the faculty also had poor expectations, and not the sense that they had low expectations of the students, but often the case was that they had expectations the students would be just like the UCSD students and could just plug into the lab with very little instruction or guidance and were frustrated when they were expected to provide uh, some guidance on the research and some background material. And so I think this is a case of where we have to have some expectation management and encourage the, the advisors to have uh, more research uh, material prepared in advance so the students can prepare before they got here. Uh, again, one of the issues with the some students did not get any uh, summer pre-summer preparation, even though it was, it was requested by the PIs. So having something more uh, formal for that is important. As many of you know, eight weeks is a very short time frame for a full research immersion. And so um, that's something we're trying to explore in terms of expanding. Uh, one of the interesting things that was sort of unexpected, uh, the HBCU programs, and as I mentioned, there are three of them uh, participating in UCSD. Um, we have additional funding for them to uh, essentially recruit, uh, recruit them to come to San Diego. So we had several events around San Diego for those groups. And the students got back to us and told us that they were actually felt a little segregated by going off to these wonderful adventures, but with only the HBCU students. And so uh, we will be rethinking that a little bit in the future on how to make sure that any of the social events are actually with the entire STARS group as opposed to just the HBCUs. Uh, we also want to increase interaction with the physics graduate students so they have an idea of what graduate school is like at UCSD. Uh, and one of the main pro problems we were having, um, which is the nature of the structure of the funding, is that, uh, in fact, this program doesn't provide any program management funding. It's actually a fairly lean program. We get about $140,000 for 12 students over three years, um, which leaves essentially nothing for program management. So we've been heavily reliant on STARS for a lot of program management, but uh, we've asked the Office of the President to provide a little bit more so that we can have uh, a secretary maintain the uh, the dashboard and, and items like that. So moving forward, um, as I mentioned, we, eight weeks seems a very short period of time, so we're going to try to expand this to nine to ten weeks if we can. Um, that's important because if we can expand beyond because that's a critical writing period. 
after the uh, summer research symposium. Uh, essentially, the students leave the day after that symposium, so they don't really have a lot of time to synthesize afterwards. Uh, it's also a period where we have, uh, and we've had over the last few years, a, a GRE, physics GRE boot camp uh, led by the California Professorate for the Advancement of Physics Careers. Uh, and so we'd like our students to prepare to, uh, to participate in that as well. Uh, we could make better use of the pre-summer period, so perhaps uh, some kind of research boot camp where the students can get prepared both in research skills and the science. Um, we'd also like to expand the program to Spelman College. Spelman is right next door to Morehouse College. Uh, the Morehouse UCSD Exchange is actually the Morehouse Spelman UCSD Exchange, and so uh, we have exactly the same infrastructure for Spelman College, um, and I think that would be a great way to uh, diversify the students that are coming in as well. We uh, started, uh, so the original program was funded with 12 total students, and we were planning on doing this as three, four, and five over the three years. We started with five, so either we have to step down or more uh, preferably we'd like to actually find additional funding for the student spots. So now that we've seen how this works, uh, we know how much it costs, we can actually uh, seek some supplemental funding for individual student spots, uh, either through the NSF or through uh, UCSD diversity funds. Uh, two of the program students that participate in this fall are, are participating in the fall exchange, so they'll be back here uh, during the fall quarter taking classes. And so one of the things that's important is to monitor their progress and see what issues they face as they are uh, pursuing a more academic uh, aspect of the UCSD experience. Um, in terms of sustainability, uh, we will be, we've been pursuing uh, a possible idea of development of an astronomy major at Morehouse. We have uh, several astronomy faculty. Um, we have several astronomy classes, much of which are, we are moving to online, and so we're looking to see if we can uh, capitalize on that investment and also help Morehouse build up their own astronomy major. Uh, and we're also looking to ex expand the faculty exchange. So we have um, more faculty, UCSD faculty, going out to Morehouse uh, this year. I'll be coming out this week, and um, uh, we'll also have some other astronomy faculty coming out towards the end of the year. Um, but we're also looking to bring some Morehouse faculty into residence in January, which is a wonderful time in San Diego and not such a great time in Atlanta. So we hope that we can recruit um, one or two uh, Morehouse faculty to spend uh, a week or two out in UCSD during January and uh, give research talks and, and, and at least have some exchange with the faculty here at UCSD. So that's it. If you'd like to learn some more, please feel free to email me at my address there uh, and also visit our website. And I thank you for your patience on this uh, recorded talk. Have a good day.